Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my Robinhood portfolio. Just wanted to do a quick add-on to my last video talking about dividends. A couple of viewers asked exactly how investors qualify for dividends, so I thought it was important to talk about how ex-dividend dates work and some of the very important dates that surround dividend payments. Uh, older viewers on the channel probably know these dates very, very well. I've put out videos about these topics extensively in the past. But for new viewers who may not know about these dates, I thought it was appropriate to talk about the very important dates surrounding dividend payments so everyone is clear on exactly how investors can qualify for dividend payments. Essentially, there are four very important dates, as you can see here. Essentially, uh, when the dividend is announced, the ex-dividend date, the record date, and the dividend payment. So the first date there the date of declaration is really when the board of directors announces what the dividend will be, uh, how many cents per share or how many dollars per share the company will be uh, basically uh, giving to the investors in the form of a dividend. And then they also announce the dates for the ex-dividend date, the record date, and the payment date of the dividend. And you can see here I have some hypothetical dates above the particular dates here. There's four dates with four hypothetical dates above. So, for example, if the company announces a dividend on September 1st, you will know when the ex-dividend date will be, the record date, and the dividend payment. So to qualify for a dividend, you essentially have to buy the stock before the ex-dividend date. In the example here, you have to buy the stock before November 1st. If you buy the stock on the day of trading on November 1st, the prior seller will be entitled to the dividend. You will not be entitled to that dividend. But if you buy even just a few seconds before close of trading on the day prior to the ex-dividend date, you hold the dividend rights and you can sell off at any time during the ex dividend date. So on November 1st, two seconds after trading begins, if you sell the stock off, you still get the dividend payment. You simply have to hold through that ex dividend date. So the day prior, hold until the start of trading, then you can sell off. So it really, on paper, you could hold the stock for just a couple seconds. One second before trading closes on the day before the ex dividend date, and then one second after the trading opens on the ex dividend date. You don't have to hold it any longer than that to qualify. The key point is you have to essentially buy before the ex-dividend date. And after that is the record date. Typically, this is always two days after the ex-dividend date, two business days. So if this is on a Friday, it wouldn't be until the next Tuesday. If it was on Monday, it would be on that Wednesday. So just two days after the ex-dividend date. And the dividend payment is typically a month or so after the record date. But it can vary from company to company. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it might be two or three months. It kind of depends. But the dates always... Well, I, would, I shouldn't say always go in this order. There are some very peculiar uh, situations in which there are very large special dividends, but I don't want to get into that. That's very complicated. For 99.9% .9 of dividends, the dates are as follows. The date in which the dividend is announced along with the dates of the other dates, ex-dividend date, record date, and dividend payment, that is followed by the ex-dividend date, typically about a month later, the record date two days after the ex-dividend date, and then the dividend payment, typically about a month after the record date. And just to use an example here, GOF Gutenheim, this is a fund I've had for quite some time in the portfolio. You can see my dividend payments on the bottom here. I also reviewed this stock in my last video. And you can see here in the middle, Gutenheim declaring its monthly distribution of dividends. And if you go right to the bottom there, you can see a payable date, July 31st. So that's the dividend payment for shareholders of record, July 14th. So that is the record date. And the ex-dividend date is July 12th. So you can see the record date is two days after the ex-dividend date. And the payment date is about two or, two or week, two to three weeks after the uh, uh, record date. Again, that date will vary, but typically the record date is always two days after the ex-dividend date. Ex-dividend date is about a month or so after uh, the stock is declared. And then the dividend payment, like I said, it can happen two weeks, maybe a month after that. So I hope that clears things up. That is how you qualify for dividend payments. Very, very specific ways in which to qualify and it all depends on the ex-dividend date. So you should always know the ex-dividend date when jumping into a dividend stock. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Like I said, in the past, I put out quite a few videos talking about ex-dividend dates and some particular situations. Uh, there's some very peculiar situations that happen with uh, special dividends where the payment date is actually before the ex-dividend date, if that makes any sense. But not to confuse you too much, 99.9% Per, uh, percent of the time, the dates will go as follows. The dividend is, is, is announced, ex-dividend date, record date, and then the dividend payment date. So if you guys have any, any questions about anything I said, let me know in the comment threads. Uh, after you catch on for a few stocks, it's really easy to kind of 
uh, tell what's happening with the stock. New investors get a little bit confused with some of these dates, but it really all depends on the exit dividend date. As long as you hold before the exit dividend date, hold on the day that the exit dividend day is trading, you can sell off at any time after that and you will receive the dividend. And typically, it doesn't show up in the portfolio until about a week or so after. So some investors think they haven't got the dividend, but then it just uh, magically appears a couple of weeks later. That's very typical in Robinhood. Usually appears about a couple of weeks before the dividend payment. So again, if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Kind of with that, I'll end the video. As always, if you guys enjoy my videos, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Until next video, we'll see you then.